Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be installing two 10 inch subwoofers in this 2017 Ford Focus ST slash RS. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to run all the wiring, install the amplifier, and integrate this to the existing sound system. Let's get started. Now before we jump into things, one thing to quickly note, this Focus is actually equipped with the upgraded Sony aftermarket sound system. So it does differ just ever so slightly in the way that we're hooking this up. First and foremost, we're going to be tapping into the factory amplifier instead of back behind the radio. Now there's multiple ways you can snag signal. You can go to the B pillars for signal. Um, you can go right back behind the radio. But in our case, because we do have the factory amp, we also have a factory sub. And that's where we're going to connect our line out converter. So as we get everything pulled apart here, we'll show you what that looks like here in a bit. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that the customer has requested that we install in his vehicle today First and foremost is this very budget-friendly Boss Audio mono amplifier. It does claim 1100 watts, but based on the size of the fuse on the side, we're looking at about 300 watts RMS. Um, so to support that, we're going to do an 8-gauge amplifier wiring kit. Now to integrate that into the factory audio system, you may need a couple of things using some sort of line-out converter. Now this line-out converter will take any amplified factory signal, like something from the radio or the factory amplifier, and produce an RCA low-level output to the amp for which the amp can now read. These come in various mix and models. Um, you can get high-end ones, you can get low-end ones, but again, we'll link everything down in the description. Now, you saw the subs that we're going to be also installing. They're already in the vehicle. We're going to have to temporarily remove them to get access to the factory amp that's underneath the false floor in the trunk area, um, but uh, they're dual audio and 10-inch subs in a bandpass enclosure. All right, so we're here in the vehicle. Now we do have the factory amplified sound system here because we have a Sony amp here and it's also indicated, if you're curious if you have this or not without even looking on your head unit, it may say Sony there as well. If it does, you do have this and here is our factory subwoofer. Now because our factory Sony amplifier is gonna have built-in crossovers, the best way for us to tap into this is just directly from the sub output. Uh, just so we can avoid any additional crossovers on our factory signal. So, these have four wires within this plug itself. Um, they're going to have two sets. It's a dual voice coil speaker. So we're going to each hook each set of wires up to our line-out converter. Then our line-out converter, we're going to run a set of RCAs to our amplifier. So that's what we're going to use to tap into, is just this harness here. Again, if you don't have the factory sound system, you can pull a speaker wire from the B pillar or right behind the factory radio. Okay, so we're here under the hood. Now the battery is on the driver's side here. And what we need to do is from this positive terminal through an inline fuse, we need to run power wire from this area through the firewall to the trunk area of the vehicle. Now we can accomplish this in a lot of different ways. There is a big factory grommet on the passenger side here. So what we're going to do is we'll end up running power wire up and over the engine bay, zip tying it out of place. Uh, but we're going to show you the grommet that we're going to pass our wire through. So on this side, we right there have our factory grommet. Now we've already poked a hole through it and we fished a wire hanger through that hole into the cabin of the vehicle. Now it's away from the factory wiring because we don't want to damage that whatsoever. Uh, but there's plenty of space in this factory grommet to run our own wiring through. So we pull this, we fill it from the other side, up underneath the uh, passenger kick area. And what we're going to do at this point is grab our power wire and we're going to tape it really well to this fish, essentially. And then we're going to lube that wire up with some soapy water so it'll easily pass through that grommet into the inside of the vehicle. All right, so with that wire fed through the firewall there, we actually ran it up and along, it comes out here. What we did is we created a little custom fuse holder, little mount there, just screws into the side of the battery box, little piece of ABS plastic here, 
And then what we did is there's actually a 13 millimeter nut there that we added it to instead of the tightening nut of the battery post. And we did that there uh, because that may compromise the quality of the connection. If we go to that versus just this nut here, we split loomed everything, goes up and over, and then we zip tied it to those holes and it goes into the firewall. Now we're gonna look way up there and that's where it comes through. If you pull back the factory firewall sound ending, you'll see the other end of that grommet. That's where that wire came through and that's how we pulled our wire through that grommet using that wire hanger and we fished that red wire down. Now, we're at this point and what we've done, we've also combined, there's a base knob wire that goes with our amplifier and a remote turn on wire. We're gonna snag accessory from the factory fuse box here using an ATA circuit. We'll show you what that looks like here in a minute and we'll also link that down in the description. That allows us to safely tap into the fuse box for switch power so our amplifier will turn on when the vehicle is on as well. So we taped our base knob wire and our remote turn on wire and we're gonna go along. Now, depending on the size and gauge of your wire, you may need to pop these off or you can just tuck it up underneath. So we're gonna start running our wire up underneath these panels, working our way to the trunk cargo area. So what we've done here is we've just popped this on out, just a couple of clips holding that in, and we pop this panel out as well. Just one, two, three clips holding that in, just like so. So we can run our wire up underneath our carpet here. We just fished it up underneath the B-pillar cover. Took the back off as well. Two clips as well as one here on the side. Went all the way along. We fished it up here and snapped it from this piece. Now we fished it up underneath the seat. We just tucked it. Went up this way. Pulled it up. There's our wire. And we're going to put our amplifier inside the cargo area up underneath the false floor. So we have plenty of length of wire to get everything wired up there. Let's go ahead and reassemble our panels, front and back, and then we can start working on our ground and mounting our amplifier. So what we've done here is we've pulled out the right hand side of our false floor um, foam support, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put in a 10 millimeter bolt. Now we do have uh, kind of a bolt location here that we could use. We could drill and tap one. You can also find a factory ground as well. Regardless of what you do, you need to make sure you clean up the paint because this will act as an insulator. So what we've done here is we hooked up our terminals to the amplifier, positive and negative. You saw the negative to that ground bolt, positive from the battery. We also hooked up the remote turn on wire that which ran in line with our power wire. We'll show you where that hooks up in the fuse box in here in just a moment. We also hooked up speaker wire to the output of the terminals. Um, and then we also put a little hole through this channel where we ran our RCAs, a really short run. Then here's our line out converter and the um, subwoofer output that we need to tap into both sets of coils here and we're going to do both left and right channels we're just going to tee into that we're not going to totally cut it we'll just solder into that and plug it back in when we're done that's where our remote turn on wire came out now we put what we called an add a circuit now an add a circuit allows us to tap into the factory fuse without actually compromising that factory circuit instead allows us to Safely tap into that, adding our own circuit from that factory spot while maintaining the original circuit without impacting it in any way. Now there's a seven and a half amp fuse right there. Well, we pulled that off, put it in our add a circuit, and then also fused our own run, and that goes down 
into this. Now we can link one of these ATA circuits in the description here for you, just in case you want to pick one of them up yourself. Okay, so we've got everything soldered up here. Now, positive wires, the first set of wires that are twisted together, it's your purple and yellow. Purple is positive, yellow is negative. That's what we tapped our left speaker or whites into. Right speaker, green is positive, and kind of this blue gray is negative. So, same thing. We didn't break the wire, we just uh, stripped the wire shielding back and then poked a hole through it and ran our wire through so we could solder onto that. Now, at this point, with these connections cool, we're going to wrap it in some electrical tape and re-loom the harness and test the tape just like factory. Alright, so we went ahead and finished hooking up our amplifier. Got everything zip tied. We finished looming our wire. Got our sub plugged back in. There's our line-out converter. It's all zip tied down in there as well. And that's about it. Now we did set our gains before we're going to reassemble everything with an SMD DD1. So they're perfectly set to the factory Sony sound system. Um, and we found that this Sony sound system clips at about uh, 26, level 26. So 25 is where we set our gains perfectly. Uh, we're not using the bass boost on this because that immediately puts distortion in the signal. But we are using the bass knob which will mount up front. Amplifier is all done. At this point we can put the false floor back, hook up our subs. We also have uh, power and ground for the lights on the subs. We'll just do a little bit of tuning on the EQ up front and uh, mount our bass knob. So with our amplifier all hooked up with a positive and negative wire, we put the negative back on the battery and put the battery cover back on. It's all done, everything's zip tied and cleaned up. We can go ahead and shut the hood. Got everything all buttoned up, panels all back in, everything all nice and clean back here. Good to go. Okay, so we got our subwoofers all installed. We even hooked up the 12 volt DC lights for the guy. And uh, there you go, nice and clean, no amp. You don't see anything. It's all tucked away and mounted up underneath the false floor. We tested everything and it sounds awesome. Like I said, we got everything tuned with the SMD DD1. And at this point of time, we are done with this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.